Yes, we booked the campground before we looked at the tents. <laughs> it's the perfect texture. I figured we better have this extra tank of gas filled up, but I never opened both of my gas tanks at once. Six years old. Six years. <laughs> Look, there's a girl, my lord, in a flatbed Ford. That's creepy. Why? I mean, this is the best we could do in Arizona. If anything, you can say it's an adventure. So this area was kind of known as a cursed area. <laughs> here in Flagstaff, Arizona, and it is cold. It's 20s and 30s all week. And I know what you're thinking. Yes, we know that Arizona gets cold. Yes, we booked the campground before we looked at the tents. <laughs> also, I think it's easier to book cold temperature places when you're in a warm environment, because you don't think about it. You think, ah, I can handle that. So pro tip, book cold places when you're in a cold place. <laughs> We have a quick surprise for Eris. Come on inside and get warm. Happy birthday, Eris! Happy birthday, Bear Bear. Number six. You blow that out. You blow the okay. candle out. Bird. Hey. She'll burn her snoot. <laughs> six years old. Six years. <laughs> Save some for later. You must like that. Oh, that's good stuff. These are their peanut butter and pumpkin oat cookies. And as we know from experience, they do not taste good to humans. Not for human consumption. <laughs> they're people safe too, but they're not good. But the dogs seem to like them though, right? That's a good girl. Oh, just doing winter stuff. We ran out of propane back in Vegas yesterday before we left, so we had a dry tank. And since our highest temperatures during the day here are about 38, I figured we better have this extra tank of gas filled up. I haven't mentioned it before, but I never opened both of my gas tanks at once. I know the jury's out on that depending on who you talk to. And while I may wake up in the middle of the night and have to run out in my sweatpants and switch propane tanks, at least I don't run out completely in the middle of the night of two tanks, I always have a spare. So, especially in the winter, my rule is I run one at a time. When one gets empty, I fill it immediately. And we never get cold till we walk outside. I don't think I've ever talked about this before, but I do put a master lock through the band holes on my propane tank with inflation being high and the theft of everything being up better safe than sorry i know they can cut these bands and still it pretty easy but you know you're out 70 80 90 bucks for a new tank and then another 30 to have it filled so that little master lock might save me 100 bucks someday in Flagstaff, Arizona. We're not doing a really big thing, but this is how we're spending our night and Cody is excited. I am excited. So we are standing on the corner in Winslow, Arizona. It is a fine sight to see. I was really excited to come out here and see the Glen Frey statue. I actually remember where I was at when Glen Frey passed away, but I've been a big fan of the Eagles since I was in high school and I know that's a little bit before my time, but 
my parents and friends' parents listen to it, so it's still one of my favorite, if not my favorite, rock bands. Look, there's a girl, my lord, in a flatbed Ford. A sticker on the corner. On a flatbed Ford in Winslow, Arizona. That was probably one of the neatest free things I've done in a while. So we actually got to see him live with Isaac back in 2013, which was super cool because he was just a little bitty kid and he knew all the words to the song, so. We still have a t-shirt from 10 years ago that he won't let go because it was so memorable. And I'm telling you, that thing doesn't just need to be thrown away. It needs to be burned. It's disintegrating. It's about to break down into its natural elements, but and there's all these shops around here with Eagles t-shirts. I could have bought a replacement, but they all close at four o'clock, so. This is a really cute town, though. If you came during the day, this would be fun. If you find yourself in Winslow, Arizona, and you happen to come stand on the corner in Winslow with Glenn Frey, see if you can find our sticker, tag us in a picture on Facebook. It'd be super cool for us to see you guys out there. One of the best features about this campground is this dog walk that they have at the back of the campground. It's a lot of open acreage. You have this beautiful snowy mountain here behind you. And then they have these trails that wind every, every which way. So you can kind of have some privacy with you and your pet because it, it stays busy. You can see some people kind of out in the distance. campground was a little spendy for what we consider spendy. It was 59 a night. That's with taxes and everything. They don't have a lot of amenities, but you are in a pretty touristy area here in Flagstaff, Arizona. So that's going to be part of it. We are in shoulder season here, so the laundromat is shut down for them, which was kind of a surprise. But overall, it's a nice little campground. If you like shade, there's a lot of shade here. I think we have one of the best sites. They have several, but Ours is really nice, with a little privatized fence. It's pretty quiet. Nice little campground. Congrats to Tim and Wendy for winning the Aurora gift card giveaway. We're excited for you guys. And don't fret if you didn't win. We do have a discount, 20% off discount put that code down here below. We'll also put it in the description and the comments where we generally put just about everything, links to the campgrounds, links to the places that we see. So make sure you're checking those if you have any questions. That's creepy. Why? I think that's the only question is, what is it? Why is it here? Why are we here? You guys might be just as confused as I am on why we're standing in an abandoned building in Arizona, but Angela, who plans 90% of our travel, is gonna tell us what we're doing here. <laughs> this is an old gas station, and the word is online that it was running as up to the 80s. They still have accounts that it was still functioning some back then. But it's kind of turned into a little graffiti land. And some of this I saw from a couple that I was watching, Wanderers Chasing Horizons. And I thought it looked really neat. And then it turns out there's more here. So we're going to peek at this little graffiti field and we're going to go check out the next little nearby ruins. really curious as to why something like this would be allowed to stand. In most cities in the country, if you want to build a new McDonald's, you just tear the old one down and build a new one. I wonder why nobody's built anything here because heavens knows there's not enough gas stations in Arizona as it is. We could definitely use one.
This is part of the story. We'll get to that. And another abandoned gas station. All I wanted was an oil change. <laughs> oh, let's not do that. Cody's really happy. If anything, you can say it's an adventure. Yeah. If we can find it, I mean, it's just... The GPS parks us in the middle of a highway. <laughs> it's just another typical untethered adventure of driving around, trying to find something that may or may not be there <laughs> before the sun goes down, which you can see how that's going. I mean, this is the best we could do in Arizona. This is the best thing to see. Don't mind him. He has been feeling a little under the weather lately. It's a little grumpy. So the story goes that back in 1878, there were two Navajo camps and the Apache raided them. They killed everyone in those two camps and then they kidnapped three girls. That was the only three that they didn't kill out of those camps. So the Navajo hear about it as the Apache are fleeing and 25 Navajo men chase them down. And they're looking everywhere and they finally find them in a crevice and a cave. Which, which we think we're standing right over. We just can't find an entrance because it looks like it's been kind of condemned and bulldozed and I don't think you can get in there now. There have been a lot of rock slides so it's not suggested to go into it but you can kind of see some of it from above and you can see the entryway. But the story goes that they find them and they start by smoking them out and as the Apache were fleeing the cave they shoot them. Even some of them were trying to bargain for their lives, and uh, but they, they still killed them. Well, then someone told them that they had already killed the three girls that they had kidnapped. So at that point, the Navajo said, okay, you're done. <laughs> and they set them on fire, which is horrible. It's gruesome. But that's not the end of it. Then, in order to try to stamp out the fire because they were trapped they had a little bit of access to water so they tried to use it couldn't they ended up killing their horses which were also in the cave with them all the supplies that they had stolen and the horses and their people so they killed the ho the horses to try to use the blood to smother out the fire it just didn't work so they died a pretty gruesome death the navajo then returned took all their belongings back and got out of there. So this area was kind of known as a cursed area. Just yeah, they, they wouldn't come back here after that incident happened, as, as far as history tells us, right? They were kind of scared of the area. As far as internet tells us, and you know the internet doesn't lie to us. So this story is... What? Based on internet logic. <laughs> but it is pretty cool to see with the old cabins and rock houses up here. I'm not too regretful that we can't go down in the cave because the one opening I see is barely big enough for me and it's... I'm not going down I'm there. I'm not going down there. <laughs> so they call this the Apache Death Cave. It's where we, you can actually just route straight here. It's a very rough ride as you saw. It is. But it's getting cool. This, we're losing daylight. So we're gonna, we're gonna book it. We're running out of daylight, like we said earlier, but we did want to come just around the corner to take a peek at what they call Two Guns Pool. This is an abandoned pool. Now, somewhere in this area here, there used to be a KOA campground. Apparently there's an abandoned KOA campground. I see evidence of where power pedestals used to be and stuff like that, but I can't confirm that this pool was actually part of the KOA. But even so, it's still pretty cool. Looks like we used to have a pavilion out here at some point, maybe some showers. Kind of an interesting thing to see before we cap the night off. So you're not disappointed that we came? I'm seldom ever disappointed, but my pet peeves are wild goose chases and rocky, muddy 
ridiculously rough roads, but as always, it paid off, so I'll stop being grumpy now. I have to ask the same question that I asked over at the abandoned gas station. Why? <laughs> if not all RVs at their core are completely self-contained. You've got a fresh water tank, you've got an indoor plumbing system, and we can run off of a water hose and city water, or we can run off of our auxiliary tank, which for us is just shy of 100 gallons. We've been doing that for a few days, so now it's time to top off the tanks. You have to look at your own unit and your owner's manual to see the right way for you to do it. For us, we just put it in the power fill setting. I have this short leader hose that I leave hooked up all the time. So when I get to camp, I put this short leader hose on and just kind of leave it hanging out the bottom like you can see here. So I'm just going to hook up to that hose, go to the spigot, we're going to fill up this tank real quick. While we wait on that to fill up, which usually takes 10 to 20 minutes depending on how low it is, we were on about a half a tank and I just kind of like to top it off every other day. If we're really conservative, we can make this tank of water last nearly a week, sometimes a week, but we're really just living like we would at home, so it's about a three-day deal. I mentioned in a previous video that I actually broke the tabs off one of my external Valterra valves because it froze up on me. So what I do now is I go ahead and hook up one sewer hose. I leave the Valterra valve open, but I shut the valve on the trailer, which is up inside our heated underbelly. That makes sure that we don't get a poop sickle for lack of a better term which means that little bit of residual water and things going through the sewer hose overnight may freeze up i don't really want to deal with it so i just keep it shut and every couple of days when i come out to top off water i go ahead and dump my tanks at the same time a lot of people ask me why don't we just buy a heated water hose and while i think that's a really good idea i did some pricing online a camco 25 foot heated water hose is about 100 bucks and in a lot of scenarios i would need two of them it's kind of uncommon for us to get in a spot where a 20 or a 25 foot hose does it every single time and on the other hand we really don't want to camp in freezing temperatures and it's not something we do very often for the couple of times a year we find ourselves in these situations we find it's easier just to go ahead and hook up the hose fill the tank and run off the water pump plus the water pressure is pretty awesome with the pump our water tanks are full now what i like to do when I'm done with this to make sure my hose doesn't freeze up, I'm just gonna unhook it and I usually try to lay it over something or lay it downhill so it drains out really well. Here it works out good because I can just lay one end of the hose over the side of this fence and it'll gravity flow everything out. I'll come out in a little while, wind it up, put it away for the night. Easy peasy, just part of being out in the cold weather. This is really one of those times I'm so thankful for these Aurora jackets, but we are all set up. Water tanks are filled, sewer is empty, and we're ready for another night of cold weather camping here in Flagstaff. Yes, we are. Catch you guys on the next one. See you next time, guys.
the texture is crazy. It's like flown. It's got these little beads all in it. You like can make the, snow ice cream with that. Well, that made a really good snowball. That's a really good that snowball. Would hurt. like little beads of foam. That is interesting. I've never seen snow like that. Uh -uh. It's fluffy, but it's got enough moisture in it that it, it's pretty hard to snowball. And when it hits the wall, it sticks. <laughs> I like it. It's the perfect texture. I'm cold. <laughs> Let's go inside. 